Hi, welcome back to another week of Ramban Ala Parsha. Um, we're still in the middle of a war, still in the middle of a bunch of tragedies, and so our learning should be Mekudash to the return of the Chatufim and Rafua Shlema for the Chayalim who were hurt, and the, and the Chama for the families who've lost sons and brothers and fathers and family members, and then for a, a complete and speedy victory to the war. Okay, Parshas Vayichi. Um, a significant event that happens at the beginning of the parsha is Yaakov expressing the overwhelming desire to be buried in Marat Halach despite the fact that he's going to die in Egypt, and Yosef agreeing. And that's a lot of the story. And you read something interesting in the story. Right? Yaakov tells Yosef, I want to be buried in Eretz Yisrael, in Marat HaVachmela, and Yosef says, I'll do it. And then shockingly, Vayomer hi shava ali, vayishava lo, vayishtachu Yisrael arosh hamita. He makes Yosef swear. Now, you know, it's just, it's striking that his son, his beloved son, who tells him he's going to do it, he makes him swear. Right? Why the need for a swear? Why not take him at his word? So the Ramban has an interesting thought here. It, it's first mentioned by Rashi, but it's expanded upon by the Ramban. He shavali ve shavalo. Says the Ramban, Lo haya Yaakov chosheid bivno hatzadik ha'ahuv lo. Sheyamre al mitzvat aviv va'al adavar sheifticho. God forbid, says the Ramban, that Yaakov suspects that Yosef is telling him something he's not going to do. Yosef loved Yaakov, Yaakov loved Yosef, if Yosef says he's going to bury Yaakov in Marat HaMachbel, he's going to do it. Right? And Yosef says, I'm going to do it. He says the Raman, it wasn't for Yosef's benefit. It was for Paro. Now there's two possibilities here. Maybe Paro won't give Yosef permission to separate from his family. Maybe the power will say to Yosef, listen, I'll let ya- Yaakov go be buried in, in Eretz Yisrael, but you have to stay here. Let someone else bury him. So this is a sort of an open question, and I'm, I'm really not sure of the answer. What would be so bad if that happened? Yes, it's nice for all the sons to bury Yaakov, but if Yosef couldn't leave Mitzrayim because power wouldn't let him, would it be so bad if Yehuda and his brothers buried Yaakov and not Yosef? So I, I'm a little unsure of that, and I'd be happy to get input on what people think. But here's the, the more significant point. That's the first point. Maybe he wouldn't let Yosef go, and this way Yosef says, I swore to my father. So Paro says, okay, I'll let you go. Oh, she yachpotz paro she kaver hanavi be'artso lichvod lahem velizchut. Right? Paro knew who Yaakov was. The Medrash tells us, or the Psukim more or less tell us, that when Yaakov came to Mitzrayim, the famine ended. Right? So Paro had great respect for Yaakov. And maybe, says the Ramban, Paro would say, yeah, but I want Yaakov to be buried in Mitzrayim. Yaakov is, is a prophet. Maybe he's almost a god to us. We have great respect for him. It'll be good luck for us. Let him be buried in Mitzrayim. Therefore, Pa- Yaakov made Yosef swear that he would do it. Because it wouldn't have been proper for Paro to tell Yosef, yes, you took a shvua, but I want you to violate the shvua. Okay, Rashi has this bizarre idea that don't violate the shvua because then I'll violate the shvua to you, that, that I speak more languages than you because I speak Hebrew. But the Ramban doesn't touch any of that. He simply just says, Paro would respect the request more. He wouldn't ask Yosef to violate uh, his oath. Vigam Yosef Yitzarech Yot. Now, now he adds a separate point, which you would think would be unnecessary given the first point, which is Yosef loved Yaakov and would have done anything for him. He says, Vigam Yosef Yitzarech Yoter Lehishtatel Beinyan Bipnei Ashvua. He says, also Yosef, yes, he was going to do it anyway, it's true. But having taken an oath, Yosef will have to try harder. Yosef will be more committed to the process of bearing Yaakov in Eretz Yisrael. And so he took an oath. 
Okay, v'chein haya hadavar, says Raman, that's exactly what happened. Kimo she'amar aleu kvar tavicha ka'asher hishbiecha. That Paro more or less confirms it. Aleu kvar tavicha, I'll let you go up to Eretz Yisrael to bury your father. Ka'asher hishbiecha. Because, or you know, like he, he made you swear. But the clear implication of the Pasuk, the words are, are, are unnecessary. It should have just said, Raman hints to the fact that it's only because you took an oath. Had you not taken an oath, I wouldn't let you do it. Okay, so here too, the Ramban sort of walks a fine line between Yosef would have done it anyway, and the Shvua helped Yosef do it more, but more specifically, that it wasn't, the Shvua wasn't for Yosef, it was for Paro. Had it not been for the Shvua, Paro would not have let Yosef do it. Okay? And, uh, and okay, that, that goes on. The story of Yaakov wanting to be buried in Eretz Yisrael goes on, and it goes to the next Ramban we're going to do. Perk Memchet, Pasuk Zayin. In the middle of this, the discussion of burying him in Eretz Canaan and his last wishes and his last will and testament and the death of uh, and his death, we find an interesting pasuk. Va'ani bevoi mi padan out of nowhere, where he says, "Umolad adcha sherolad tachrem lecha yu al shem achem in karbu nachlatam to your children." By the way, va'ani bevoi mi padan meita alai rachel be'eretz Canaan badech ba'od kivrat eretz lavo afrata va'ek bere asham badech afrat he beit lachem. By the way, I have to tell you, Yosef, your mom died suddenly, Rachel died suddenly on me when I was traveling. Right? Rashi basically says that Yaakov is kind of apologizing to Yosef. So first of all, he says, and I, I didn't, you know, she died suddenly, and I didn't even take her into Eretz Yisrael. So says the Ramban, that's crazy. mahu. Was, did Rachel, was Rachel buried in Chutz La'aretz? Chas v'shalom. Sherei ba'aretz meita, v'sham nikvara. Kimo shenemar kan b'pasha meita alai Rachel ba'aretz kenam badach, ba'od kivrat eretz lavo afrata. Of course she was in Israel. Okay, so it's such an obvious, strong question, the Ramban has on Rashi, there have to be answers. The Mizrahi, for example, says, no, Rashi means... She wasn't buried inside a city. She was buried outside a city. Uh, okay, fine. But let's come to the more serious point. Says the Ramban. Right? I'm here making you swear and telling you how important it is that I be buried in Maratha Machbela. Says the Ramban, but I know that you're angry at me. Because your mother was not buried in Maratha Machbela. Says the Raman, but it's just it's not that I happen to decide to bury your mother not in Maratha Machpela. I decided it because that's what God wanted. Because God had a had a purpose for your mother's burial. And says the Raman, Nevuzardan Ovrim Sham, right? In the Golos of Nevuzardan, and they're traveling past your mother's grave. Yatsita al kivareha al kivra uviksha rachim alehem shenemar. The famous pasuk called Brahman Ishma Nehi Bechi Tamarim Rachem Bevakal Baneha Meanali Nachem Al Baner, etc., etc. Kama Hashem Minii Kolech Mi Bechavi Nach Mi Dima. That's all Rachel, and so she had to be buried by Derech because that's where the children would pass her, and she would come out of her grave kiviyachol. And daven for them. All that is Rashi. Okay, it makes complete sense, and the Ramban agrees with it. Except, and there's a fascinating methodological point in the Ramban. He agrees with it, but he says, right? Chazal don't just come and make up a medrash. There must be something in the Pasuk that hinted to this idea that when they were traveling, Rachel would come out of her grave and daven for them. Right, the Ramban thinks it's the word baderech. 
בדרך אשר יעברו בו בניה מתה, ושם קברתי על לטובתה. Right, so the Ramban finds a source in the Pasuk, in the Pshat of the Pasuk for the Medrash, that the Pasuk says twice the word derech, ba derech. The idea is the Pasuk is hinting at the fact that Rachel had another job. And the other job would be to dive for our children. Kihilo meita ba derech, rak berama. Now this is an interesting point. Says the Ramban, she didn't die on a road. She died in a place called Rama. Shehi ir be'eretz binyamim v'sham nikvara. However, aval baderch shel atid meita, it was going to turn into a road. Vakatuv loy faish ba'atidot rak yermos b'hem. Now this raises another interesting point, which I've mentioned before. Which is the Ramban wrote the parish on the Torah in Spain, in Girona, where he lived. But then, at the end of his life, he was exiled to Eretz Yisrael. I think he's the first, maybe the only Jew ever to be exiled to Eretz Yisrael, right after the famous uh, the dispute with Pablo Cristiani. He lived his last two years in Eretz Yisrael. And he, he became more familiar, obviously, with the geography of Eretz Yisrael. And he saw that he had made mistakes in where certain things were. And so he sent back to Girona corrections to his parish. Now, since it's before computers and things like that, these corrections were added, but nothing was taken out. And in fact, uh, the, the Machon here in Gush published a Sefer a few years ago. That we used to think there were 10 to 15 of these corrections. They published hundreds of them. One of the main ones is the story of where Rachel was buried. Because the Ramban originally thought called Berama Nishma is a place called Rama, and it's in Eretz Binyamin. And he says that here. Previously, where Rachel died, that's really the, the home base for this discussion. There, the, the Ramban says, I used to think that. I came here, Ashrei Shazachiti, to come to Eretz Israel, and I saw, no, she's buried in Beit Lechem, which is really a short distance from Hebron. Which makes the question, why didn't I bury her in Maratha Machbela much, much stronger? But it answers the question of Baderach, right? She's buried on the road, literally on the road, out of Eretz Israel, going, going to the south. Okay? So sometimes you have to sort out when the Ramban wrote something. And we'll see in a minute that this is one of those tough places to sort it out. Um, okay, so he says the, the Derech that the Torah is referring to is that there's going to be a, a, a highway next to where Rachel was buried. buried. Right, the Ramban emphasizes this point. He He's asking Yosef to do all these things for him. He didn't do that for Yosef's mother, and he's kind of embarrassed, so he's apologizing. And he buried Leah there. First thing he says is, look, I buried your mother in Eretz Yisrael, not like Rashi says. If you leave me here, I'm going to be buried in Chutz Laaretz. That's bad. That's much worse. But I was able to bury your mother in Eretz Yisrael. That's a good thing. Right? And she died suddenly on the road. And I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, right? She died suddenly. And I don't have a whole bunch of people to embalm her. And I, I can't leave her there. And I have a whole family with me. And I have all these, these, these cattle. It would take me too long to get to Hebron. Now the Ramban, I think it's an added sentence. Now the Ramban says, Right from Beit Lechem to Marat HaMachpela is, I don't know, 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers. It's a half a day walk. It's nothing. Says Says the, says the Ramban, it's true, it's a short distance if you're traveling by yourself. But if you have the whole camp, it would take you days. And you see, it took him a long, long time till he came to his father. Yaakov traveled very slowly. So he apologized to Yosef. That's what this Pasuk is doing here. 
Now, one more point. V'gam Yosef yodea shemeta badech v'nikvara ba'aretz. V'kavod asalo b'motah. He knows where his mother died, and he knows that Yaakov was broken up about her death and, and made a big levaya and made a big ceremony. Aval ha-kavana li Yaakov, shelo holicho to l'me'ara, kidei shelo yikvor sham shte achayot. Says the Ramban an interesting point. It's something we've, we, that came up earlier in the Sefer, which is, if the Avot kept the Torah, how did Yaakov marry two sisters? So the Ramban will say Yaakov married two sisters in Chutz because they didn't keep the Torah in Chutz Okay, now that they came into Eretz Yisrael, somehow Rachel had to die because Yaakov can't have two wives. But more than that, he couldn't bury two wives together. Ki yevosh me avotav. The Ramban thinks that Yaakov maybe did something wrong in marrying both of them. Okay, so why does Leah get to be buried there? Vilayahi haniseit lo rishona beheter. No, Leah was the permitted wife. It's true that Yaakov was tricked into it, but she was the permitted wife. Right, the way the Ramban sees it, it wasn't a slam dunk that Yaakov was going to marry Rachel after Lavan tricked him, but he had promised her he would marry her. Another Lashon Shvua that we see in the Parsha. He had promised her, and he loved her, and so he married her. But it was kind of a gray area, because obviously the Torah, it's an Issa Doraisa to marry two sisters. So the Ramban says that Yaakov would have been embarrassed if he buried both Rachel and Leah with Avram and Yitzchak in Marat HaMachpelah, and so he didn't. Okay, so basically, you know, the, the story is interrupted by this apology of Yaakov for not having buried Rachel in Marat HaMachpelah, and we understand it. Either you know, she died quickly on the road, and the Ramban's Chiddush on the road is where the whole Medrash comes from. Kol right? Second, Yaakov traveled very, very slowly, so even if it's the case, as the Ramban realized at the end of his life, that she's buried exceptionally close to Hebron, it still was too far for Yaakov to make while the body, you know, was, was sort of fresh because there were no ways to embalm her back then. And the third thing is, that Yaakov didn't want to bury her in Marat HaMachpelah because it would be embarrassing to, to his avos, to the parents, for Yaakov to have married two sisters, even though there's a technical answer to it. Okay, that's an important Ramban. Let's continue. The Ramban, then, the, the Pasuk then says, Vayivarech et Yosef vayomar ha'elohim ashehi talachu avotai lefanav Avraham v'yitzchak etc., etc. What's going on here? So he says the Ramban, Yes, the Torah says that Yaakov loved Yosef. The way Yaakov expressed that love for Yosef was by blessing his children. Right, so in this in this iteration, Yosef has no other children, and so he pours all of his love into Ephraim and Menasheh, who are Yosef's children. Right? What else would anybody want in their lives except for their children to be successful? So the, the love that Yaakov has for the father is reflected in the children. O Sha'ar Banav. Al shem achayhem, umi birchatam yivarchu gamhem. Says the Raman, another possibility. There were other children. But what? But they would receive through Ephraim and Menashe, they would receive a chalak in the Pasuk. And here's a shocking line three words. Vahu hanachon be'enai. Says the Raman, I think that's true. I think Yosef had more children other than Ephraim and Menashe. How could this be? So he says as follows, Ki ha-navi omer, Yaakov Avinu says to Yosef, Umo ladetecha, asha ho ladeta, acharehem lecha yihyu, al shem achehem yikaru benachalatam. Yaakov says, the way I always understood it, if there have to be more children, they won't become their own shvatim, they'll inherit through the two shvatim of Ephraim and Menashe, right? Because the bracha to Yosef was, your two sons, Kiru uvein vishimon yihyu li, 
they'll be full-fledged shvatim. Okay? Now, why would Yaakov have said, if you have more children? Right? Didn't he know? And or why would the Torah leave it in? I always thought to myself, okay, it turns out he didn't have more children. So why did the Torah leave in the point of Yaakov saying to Yosef, oh, if you have more children, they won't get the same the same level of Yerusha as Ephraim and Menashe, they'll inherit through them. So says the Ramban, Udvaro lo Yaakov's words aren't silly. Aval holid banim. No, Yosef had more children. Kidat unklut shalmar Ubanin did tolid basrehon. He doesn't say if the sons that you have after them, they'll they'll get a portion of this bracha. <coughs> right? Sometimes it speaks in the past tense when it means the future tense. Right? <laughs> Says the Ramban, I agree, but I think he had more sons at this point. He had Ephraim and Menashe before the famine. Then he had other sons afterwards. The Torah is telling us he had two originally. Then he'll have more. Right? The other sons didn't do anything fancy. They didn't do anything great. So there's no reason for the Torah to mention them. But the fascinating thing in the Ramban is it always bothered me, right? Why does the Torah refer if you have more sons? He didn't have more sons. The answer is he did have more sons. Okay? Maybe, I was thinking maybe this would help with the count of B'nai Yisrael when they come down to Eretz Mitzrayim, right? The question is, is it 69 or 70 and Yochevet ben Achamot? But what about the two sons of Yehuda, who Er and Onam were dead already? Why are they counted and the people coming down to Mitzrayim? Maybe they weren't. Maybe the sons of Yosef, maybe had two more sons. It's hard to know. But the Chiddush of the Ramban, and it really is a Chiddush, is not just that he theoretically could have more sons. He did have more sons. It's just historically, they weren't significant enough to be counted in the bracha. Okay, next. What happens? Ephraim and Manasseh are in front of Yaakov. Yaakov is a very old man. He okay. gives, he, he says as follows. Okay, let's move on. After the bracha, we read something interesting. Yosef sees that his father seems confused, right? And, you know, and he switched his hand so that his right hand, the, the, the main bracha hand, is on Ephraim, and he's the younger brother, and the left hand is on Menashe, and he's the older brother. He's supposed to get the main bracha. And this bothers Yosef. So fascinating Ramban. Says the Ramban, it's very short. Pasuk Yud Zayin. Ulai Yosef haya ohevet Menashe yoter, Maybe Yosef really liked Menashe best. The Ramban assumes that you like the Bechor best. And so it bothered him very much that his father was switching his hands. But that's not really the Pshat, says the Ramban. His father was confused. His father doesn't know what he's doing. But if he gives the bracha in a state of confusion when he doesn't know who's who, lo tabo bir katalehem ki einana beruach hakodesh kiraui. Right, he won't be doing it with real ruach hakodesh. He'll just be doing it like some old man, and those brachas won't come true. Vika asher amar lo yadati bini yadati nit payes. When Yaakov said to Yosef, "No, I'm doing it on purpose. I know who's the older and who's the younger." But I want to give the better bracha to Ephraim because he has a brighter future. Yosef understood that the brachos would come true. Right? It reminds us a little bit that Yaakov, um, so that Yitzchak, when he saw that the bracha to Yaakov was going to come true, he told Esav, it's too late. The brachos are going to come true. But the idea is brachos have to be given with full kavana. As an aside, it, it surprised me that the Ramban doesn't point out the obvious, which is Yosef from his past had learned the, 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 the lesson 
that favoring the younger over the older is going to present a risk. And maybe, you know, maybe Menashe will be angry at Ephraim, and maybe that's what bothered him. But that's not what Yosef says, and so let's leave it. That's not what the Ramban says, and so let's leave it. And let's go to one last Ramban. At the end of the parsha, we come back after Yaakov, after, uh, after Yaakov dies, we come back to this idea of burying him in Eretz Kina'an, and we read something interesting. The Torah says, Shama Kavru, um, I'm sorry, he, before he dies, he's telling the sons he wants to be buried in Eretz Kina'an, Shama Kavru at Avraham ve'et Sarah ishto, Shama Kavru at Yitzchak ve'et Rivka ishto, v'shama Kavarti et Leah. Right? It's a whole history of Marat HaMakpelah. Shama Kavru at Yitzchak says Raman, Shalo Amar Kavarti, Ba'avur Hayato Esavi Mo Bikfurat Avihem. So the first thing the Ramban says is he doesn't want to mention that he shared burial of some of his parents with Esav. He certainly wasn't part of burying Rivka. Esav did that himself. He, he wants to sort of, you know, shortchange that, that story because he's afraid that Esav will, will try to get in and try to get a chilek of Marat HaMachpelah, which would be bad for him. Right? The more, the, you know, when you, dis, when you mention all the relatives that are buried there, so then you make your children more, you know, more excited to bury you there. Right? Avram didn't just buy it for himself. He bought it for a family burial plot. plot. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, okay, without reading it inside, I'll just mention that the Ramban thinks, in fact, it was true. Esav did make a play for the Marat HaMachbelah. That's why Yosef brought troops with him, right? He didn't just come by himself. He came, um, he came with, uh, with Rechem and Parashim, and they had a fight with, uh, with Esav, and they won. Okay, now, the real question that's bothering the Ramban, and I guess it's bothering, should bother us also, is why didn't Yosef want to be buried in Marat HaMachpelah? Right? Yosef makes a speech at the end of the Parsha. Um, Yosef makes a speech at the end of the Parsha saying, you have, to bury, you have to bury me in Eretz Yisrael, but why doesn't he want to be buried in Marat HaMachpelah? And so says the Ramban, that Yosef would have been like to be buried in Marat HaMachpelah, except Marat HaMachpelah was set up and that's it. Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, they're the Avot HaUma, and the Ramban says definitively, we're just running out of time, so I'll say it outside, no one else gets to be buried there. That's the burial place for the Avot HaUma. And it fits into the Ramban's theme of all of Sefer Breshit, which is Ma'asevot Siman Labanim or Ma'asevot Yitzira Labanim, the last real story we read in Sefer Breshit confirms that. Yosef mattered, and Moshe obviously mattered, and, Aaron, and people who came behind before, I'm sorry, after them. But in terms of the Avot, the special din of what happened to the Avot is going to happen to the children, that ends with Yaakov Avinu. And therefore, Yosef knew that and the brothers knew that. And says the Medrash, Yosef said, bury me wherever you want in Eretz Yisrael, because I know I cannot be buried with the Avot in Marat HaMachpelah. Historically, obviously, that's not the case. Everybody wanted to be buried with Marat Amach, in Marat HaMachpelah. And over the, the, the centuries, you know, when we have reports from people who went down underneath what we think of as the Marat now, there are, there are thousands of bones all over the place because who wouldn't want to be buried with Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov? But technically speaking, we don't know who any of those people are because their children after Yaakov, the people who became B'nai Yisrael started a new layer of history and they don't get to be buried with the Avot HaUma. The Avot HaUma are three and only three men, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, four and only four women, and that's who gets to be buried in Marat HaMachpelah. So today we mostly focused on the story of Yaakov's passing and his requests for Yosef to bury them there. 
the, the requirement that Yosef take a shvua, which was mostly for Paro's sense. Um, we did see also Yosef's children getting the bracha, right? And how that had to be done bikavana atzuma, right? And he blessed the children because he loved Yosef so much. And the fact that Yosef never dreamed of and never had a claim to Marat HaMachpelah because that was set aside just for Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Okay, Yashkoch to everybody. It was a good week. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.